Good morning, everybody. Hey, so it's Monday, April 6th. Hope you guys had a good break over Easter. And got to get outside a little bit. Um, so today we're going to kind of mostly do review. Um, most of you guys did really well on your quizzes. Had a little trouble with your story problems, and sometimes I think your vocabulary. So I'm going to hit a few of those things that I think you need to work on a little bit more. Okay, the first one is a story problem. And um, as you look at it, uh, this is Jayla, and uh, this is Sam. And Sam ran to kick the ball, and uh, as you can see, Jayla pulled it out, and poor Sam went flying through the air and landed here on his back. Um, we call him Charlie Brown sometimes. Anyways, poor Sam. This is the, what models what he did as he flew through the air. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find out how long he was in the air, and we're also going to find his total height. And so to do that, you just do what we've normally been doing all along. You just find the axis, which is, if you remember, negative B over 2A. So the negative of 8 is negative 8. And 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. And if you reduce that, you get 1 fourth. And you can use 1 fourth or 0.25. I actually think that it's easier to use the fraction, so that's what I do. So the vertex, we already know it's going to be 1 fourth there. We're going to plug 1 fourth end up here. 1 fourth squared is 1 fourth times 1 fourth, which is 1 sixteenth. And when you take negative 16 and multiply it by 1 over 16, you get negative 1. 8 times 1 fourth gives you 2. Negative 1 plus 2 equals 1. So this is 1. So what that means is that... Um, this looks a little bit higher than what he actually went. This says he only went one foot high. So that's a little bit silly. So actually, he probably only went flying like this. And the first number, that tells me how long he was in the air to get to my axis of symmetry. So if this was one fourth of a second, then that means the other half was one fourth of a second. And so the total of time he was in the air was one half of a second. So really it shouldn't have hurt that bad because he didn't go very high and he wasn't air. So Sam, you're just whining. So that's the first one. I just want you to see a story problems just because they got words in them doesn't make them tough. All right, so here we go, the next thing. Um, next thing, this is gonna work on vocabulary a little bit. Um, to get my axis, I'm gonna use negative B over two A, rotten banana over two apples. So the negative of negative six is six. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2, and that equals 3. A lot of your mistakes on the quiz was you, didn't, you did not take the negative of whatever this was, and so you came out with the wrong sign for this, which is going to mess everything up pretty well. It's not that you don't know how to do it, it's just you're not being careful. The vertex then, x equals 3 is the axis. The vertex is going to be 3. If we plug 3 in here, 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 18 plus 8. So that gives me negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. My y-intercept is this number here, which is 8. My zeros, now, uh, the zeros are where it crosses the x-axis, and that's what we're going to get today. So we're actually going to wait on this one here um, until we do a little bit more work. So we're not going to worry about that for right now. But here, the axis is x equals 3. This is positive, so I know it goes up. So I'm going to go over here and put my dotted line in. This. And then the vertex is at 3, negative 1, which would be right there. The y-intercept is 8, which is way up here, which means I come across and I put one here. And so, for right now, those are the three I ask you to do. Today we're going to learn about zeros, and then that will give us five points as we go on. All right, now I think today's assignment is going to be pretty, hopefully, easy for you guys. Um, all you have to do is find the zeros, which is the x-intercepts. And so if you think about it, in the book they're going to write 0 equals x minus 5 times x plus 3. We use, usually write y equals that, or f of something equals that. So what they're saying is the y value is 0. Well, if you go back and look at this graph, where the y is 0, that is where it's going to cross the x-axis. So all you have to do is ask yourself, what do you put into here to make this part come out to be 0. Well, 5 minus 5 is 0, so one of the x-intercepts would be 5. 
And what would you put in here to make this zero? It would be negative three. Negative three plus three is zero, so negative three would be the other. So in this parabola right here, what it means is, is that it's gonna cross at five and at negative three and loop up like that. That's all it is, is you just find an x intercepts. Now if we look at this one, we say what's the x intercepts? Well, for inside the parentheses, this would have to be negative four. Then we have to think about this one. This doesn't have a number next to it, but what would make it zero is zero, because zero times anything is gonna give you zero. And so there's your two of them, negative four and zero. Now when we come down to number three, what we have to do first is put that in standard form, and then we're gonna factor it to make it look like one of these two. So when you factor or standard form, you always want your x squared positive because it's much easier to work with. So I'm gonna kick this over here by subtracting 24 from both sides. And that will give me that zero equals x squared minus 10x minus 24. And then I'm gonna factor that into x minus 12 and x plus two. And so my x-intercepts are my zeros are 12, because that makes that zero, and for this one it would be negative two. Okay, and then I'll go to the last one here. This one, what I do first is get everything on one side, so negative three x squared minus nine x minus six equals zero. And then I don't want a negative here, and if you look, it has a GCF of negative three. This is the toughest kind you'll see. So we're gonna divide this whole side right here, everything by negative three. Everything there is going to get divided by negative 3. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So when you do that, when you divide these, you get x squared, and then you get plus 3x, and then you get plus 2 equals 0 divided by anything is 0. And then this will go into x plus 1, and x plus 2 equals 0. And so your two zeros are negative 1 to make this 0, and negative 2. All right, so that's today's, and I, I just want you to understand what it is that you're trying to find. You're finding the zeros, which are the same thing as the x-intercepts. Have a great day.